It's time for your week 11 over under picks on the bottom line view. What's going on NFL gamblers and BLVers? It's Mitch back here with another week of NFL over under picks. This time for week 11 of the 2023 NFL season. If that sounds good, don't forget to gronk, spike the like button, and subscribe for weekly NFL picks just like this. Where I pick every game across the NFL schedule over or under. Let me know in the comment section below your favorite over under bet of week 11 this NFL season. Let's go. But first, an update on the record. 8-6 and six last week. 84-63-3. and three. Let's just continue to hit above 500. First season here on the channel, picking every game over or under. Hopefully, we can continue that streak. Let's begin with Thursday Night Football, and I'll keep it brief because you guys have probably already seen this game. I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to be correct or incorrect, but the trends say play the under on primetime. You're going to hit more than you miss. And I actually like the under in this game. I've seen 46. I've seen 46 and a half. I think that the Ravens defense is very, very solid. And they have a very good handle on Joseph Burrow there in Cincinnati. Overall, they've played him very well over the past two years. Since bringing in the new DC McDonald there, who's going to be a head coach soon. You know, the Don Martindale style of defense... They made that switch primarily because they couldn't stop Joe Burrow. They made that switch to McDonald, and ever since, he's really done a number on Joe Burrow. On the other side, Big Lou, he knows how to stop Lamar Jackson. You know, this is a team that's familiar with Lamar Jackson. The Steelers, the Browns, the Bengals, they see him twice a year. They're not shocked by his speed. NFC teams, teams that don't play Lamar very often— that's where you pick the over in Ravens games. But I think for the Ravens to really move the ball, they've got to run it. Lamar is going to be under pressure because Ronnie Stanley, his left tackle, is out. And I believe this will go under. I think it's going to be something like 23-20, 24-21 in that range, but just under this number. So give me the under on Thursday night football. Now to Sunday. Total is 33 that is insane for the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns. I don't know if they could make a total lower than 33. In fact, I'm actually going to double check if this total is 33. That is how like crazy that total is. That is insanely low. That is insane. Hold on a second. I'm doing this live. I need to check. 33. It's actually the total. My goodness. Okay, so just for the very fact that that is one of the lowest numbers I've ever seen in my life as a football fan, I'm going to have to take that over. I'm going to have to go over there on the total of 33. My goodness is that low. Holy. So, yeah, the Browns are a really good defense. They're at home. The Steelers have a good defense. They're playing a rookie quarterback. I understand it. That is just such a low number. I have to go over. I'm sorry, guys. I have to. Hoping for a 20 to 17 football game there. Next, the total is 48 for the Chicago Bears and the Detroit Lions. This feels like an over for me. This feels like an over, even though 48 is a pretty high number. I feel like the Bears could have success, especially late in the game if the Lions get up big early with Justin Fields running and scrambling and making plays with his legs. I could also see the Lions having the top five offense that they do moving the football and scoring a lot of points, especially off of play action pass. I think that's going to have a lot of success for them in this game. It's also in a dome, a controlled environment. It's not in Chicago. It's in Detroit. So I feel pretty good about this number going over 48. I could see Detroit scoring within 30 to 40 points, and I could see Chicago putting up 20, so... I'm going to go over in that NFC North matchup. Next, 44 is the number for the Packers and the Chargers. 
This feels like a really good number, honestly. But because we have Justin Herbert, the Charger defense, which is extremely inconsistent and not very good overall, and you've got Matt LaFleur's rushing offense of the Packers. I think they'll be able to run the ball against the Chargers. It's in Green Bay. I think the run game will open up some passes for Jordan Love. And I'm not a big Jordan Love guy right now. He has been struggling. He has been inconsistent. But this could be a defense that he really torches, or at least has one of his better games against. So I think Herbert scores against this Joe Barry defense that's pretty bad. I also could see Austin Eckler having a pretty good day on the ground because the Packers are just not good at defending the run. So I could see this game being like a sneaky over where it's like 27-24, 27-23, 28-21 type of game. I think the Chargers probably win just barely, but I could see this going over both teams playing in the 20s. So give me the over in that one. Next, 46 and a half Las Vegas Raiders, Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins at home, I'm taking the over. I don't really care. There's not a lot of science here. Taking the over. The Miami Dolphins are a really talented offensive team. They've had a bye week to repair and prepare for the Las Vegas Raiders. Their offensive line should be healthier. And I just feel feel like this is a statement. Raiders have won two in a row. Miami coming off a really rough offensive performance in that Germany game against Kansas City. I think they put up 30, 40 points here. I, I really think they come out and they put up a huge number. So as long as the Raiders get to around 14 to 17, I think that we should be able to cover the over. Miami is just a perfect place for that to happen. They get ahead. There could be turnovers. There's going to be points in bunches. I like the over. Next, 37 for Washington and the Giants. I'm going to go under here. Although I do like Washington's offense, the Giants, the better side of their football team, uh, there's not a lot to like on that team. You got Tommy DeVito at quarterback for the Giants. I just don't see them moving the ball and scoring a lot of points. So one, it's a one-sided equation here. And I just feel like ultimately when you watch the Giants play defense against Washington earlier this year. They have a pretty good handle on how to get to Sam Howell, how to get pressure, how to force, you know, punts and things like that. And Washington doesn't have to be overly aggressive. They can kind of pace this game, get ahead and kind of control the ball. Don't turn it over, win this game. So I feel like this should be an under 37 here. Next up, total is 40 for the Tennessee Titans and Jacksonville. I'm going to go under here as well. I just don't like Jacksonville's offense right now. I think the defense is the better unit on their football team. What they do best is stop the run. That's what the Titans want to do. Both teams are familiar with each other. I feel like the Titans pass rush could really get after Trevor Lawrence in this game. Their offensive line has been lousy all year long, and they look terrible against San Francisco. I I think this goes under 40 in this game. I like how the defenses match up with the opposing offenses. Next, 42 for the Dallas Cowboys and the Carolina Panthers. I'm going to take the over. I just feel like Dallas has been an over team as of late. They've been scoring a lot of points. Dak Prescott's played really, really well. This is a good spot for Tony Pollard to get on track with one of the worst rush defenses in football in Carolina. And ultimately, Dallas is one of those defenses that, yeah, they can pressure you, which leads to turnovers, leads to you know touchdowns the other way, like Deron Bland going pick six mode. But at the same time, they're one of those units that, They play to their level of competition at times. They take their foot off the gas. They let teams score points at times. So I could see this go over 42. That is a low number for a Dallas offense that's cooking right now. Next up, you got a 48 and a half for the Cardinals and the Texans. Just for the fun of it, I'm going to go over. I do feel like the Texans defense has gotten a little bit better. I really liked how they played against the Bengals. But the way that this Texans offense is playing, they're putting up points And they're really pacing games. And C.J. Stroud is slinging the rock. And especially at home, he's been phenomenal. I think Kyler Murray will try to match that with his playmaking ability. And I really like what I saw from Kyler. So I'm going to go over. I think this manages to get into the 50s in this game. Just both quarterbacks putting on a show in Houston. Next up, 39 and a half for the Jets and the Bills. I'm going to go. This is tough, actually. I could see this going over. I wouldn't bet this, but I'm going to lean towards the under. It is a Jets game, so they don't have much offense. The Bills have already seen their offense once this year. The Bills' defense was a lot healthier at that time in week one. 
And Zach Wilson obviously didn't really have a lot of time to prepare for that game because he was launched in there off of injury. At the same time, I do feel like the Jets' defense has a really good handle for the Bills and Josh Allen and what they do. So I don't think the Bills are really going to be putting up 30 here. You know, at best, I could see them putting up 24, you know, that in that type of range. And if the Bills cover the spread, it's probably because they win something like 24 to 10 or 13. But I could see the Jets hanging in the game if it's low scoring. So I'm I'm going to say under, but barely. I, I don't really have a good handle on that one. Next up, 41 and a half, San Francisco and Tampa Bay. I'm actually going to take the over because I think San Francisco is going to put up 30 in this game. So if I'm thinking that San Francisco is going to put up 30, I could see Tampa putting up over 10 points. So the likeliness this goes up over is pretty high so I actually like the over here and I'd actually probably prefer to play the team total San Francisco over generally because I think San Francisco if you watch that game last year they played Tampa Bay and Todd Bowles defense they lit them up with Brock Purdy I think it could be very similar San Francisco when fully healthy probably has the most consistent balanced offense in the league the play action that they run at home is going to absolutely torch Tampa Bay in my opinion and I think they're one of the few teams that can actually run the ball on Tampa Bay so I'm going to take the over in this one I think Baker will do his part and put up around 17 points on the Niner D especially in the fourth quarter so give me the over for the Niners and the Bucks. next 46 and a half Seattle Los Angeles I like the over here as well I think I don't like the Rams' defense overall, and I do feel like a healthy Matthew Stafford on offense with Cooper Cup, Nakua, and just Sean McVay understanding the rules of the Seattle defense, how to break it down, how to pick it apart. I want to play towards Sean McVay, masterclass, Matthew Stafford, healthy, Cooper Cup, all that stuff. So I'm going to play the over. I think this should be an exciting game that's decided by one score. One team gets to the 30s, and that will be the winner, and one team's in the high 20s. So I see this going over. Next, 42 and a half. I like the under in this matchup. This is Sunday Night Football, so another primetime spot to take an under. I like Brian Flores against Russell Wilson here. I like their ability to stop the Broncos' run game, which has really been their engine, their bread and butter for this offense as of late. And Russell Wilson has been able to work from comfortable pockets and play action. And I feel like Flores is really going to pressure and heat up Russ, and that's going to lead to mistakes, sacks, Russ likes to hold on the ball, and I don't think that the Broncos receivers are really going to be able to torch the Vikings secondary. I also, on the other side, like how the Broncos are playing defense, and Josh Dobbs is due for a little bit of a down performance, especially on the road in Denver. First road game for the Vikings offense with Josh Dobbs, so I'm taking the under here. And then Monday Night Football, 45 and a half, Eagles, Kansas City. Ooh, uh, this I'm going to go over. I, I don't love it, but I'm going to take the over here. I think 45 and a half, I could see this at 47, 40, you know, 48 type of number at the end of the day. I, I feel like the Eagles offense as much improved as the Chiefs defense is and as good as it's been. I just feel like the Eagles offense is really, really, really talented. And at the end of the day, they're going to score their points, you know, and, and they have a cheat code because on fourth down and one, they're going to convert every time. Then on the other side, I really like how the Chiefs match up with the Eagles defensively. I think especially at home, you know, Mahomes, no no crowd noise to speak of. This isn't in Philadelphia. The offensive line for the Chiefs will be able to block the Eagles, I feel, providing time for Mahomes to pick apart the zone coverages of the Eagles and the scramble plays of Mahomes, Andy Reid off a of bye week. To me, it just feels like an over, similar to the Super Bowl, maybe not as high scoring as the Super Bowl, but... I think that especially early in the game, both offenses, I think the Chiefs could be really, really good early and then the Eagles will try to catch up because I think Spags will throw them a curveball at the Eagles and then the Eagles will catch up in the second half. But I think this is an over 45 and a half. Those are my picks for the over-unders for week 11 of the 2023 NFL season. Let me know yours in the comment section below. Hopefully this helps you play some bets, and win some money for week 11. Thank you so much for watching. It's Mitch, The Bottom Line View. Love you all, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.